Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Chasing Psychological Safety. So a couple of things. First of all, um, still not in the office. Um, a lot of things are happening. Uh, loads and loads of amazing client work we can't wait to talk to you about because the people that we are starting um, to do business with and to empower the people of with our dashboard are in amazing places where they have done a lot of this work already. And so they are um, good examples of what happens when you're serious about taking away some of your human debt. So we'll be very happy to bring them over also um, next week and the week after, I believe we're going to have a couple of other new um, interviews with superheroes and these people I guarantee you're going to love. They have been through the mirror, they lived it, they fought it, they have had the passion, they have had the drive, they've had the understanding, they have become excited by changes and possibilities and they have cried in corners. So come back and listen to them. Now, about yesterday's article, for those of you who haven't read it, it's about this series on Apple TV called Severance. And it is chilling. The reason it's chilling is because it hits way too close to home. It is normal that all of us that have lived in an office relate to this movie. The only reason we relate to this piece of, of, uh, of dystopian reality uh, story is because we recognize those themes. In short, and for those of you who have read my article or heard about it at all, um, what it is, is essentially a series where the premise is that workers of this potentially evil corporation are expected to have undertaken a surgical procedure that this allows them from remembering their uh, private self when they're at work and their work self when they're at home, which obviously um, ensures that they have complete privacy or, or rather complete secrecy over their work because they obviously cannot say anything about what they're doing. And it also um, ensures that they are presumably productive and able to do their job. Now, the I think the most interesting twist of this um, outside of uh, the fact that, you know, outside of the evident bit where we have all lived this reality and we have we all have a fear that if evil corporations could do this they would have done so because let's face it we've been expected to be nothing but a robot with no feelings and no personal lives for the vast majority of our professional lives so why would it change now and why would they not push it even further so the fact that we recognize it is horrendous and we can come back to it but a couple of things in the in the series that are really interesting are the fact that for the job to happen, for these people to do their work, um, some the, 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 the heroes of the story work in a department called the Data Refinement Department. And what they are asked to do is look at numbers on a screen and isolate and delete numbers that they believe are um, wrong. They represent data of sorts. They don't know what data, they don't know what it's for, and they're supposed to just delete them. And more so, they're supposed to do so as they feel scary. That is the um, training and the um, kind of indication that new starters get, which is simply look at them. At some point, these numbers are going to look scary to you, and those are the numbers you need to get rid of. And what a concept that is. Uh, stop and think about it. They couldn't, this evil corporation couldn't have removed people's humanity and their feelings and their ability to understand anything, because if they'd done so, then they couldn't have done their work. So even if the option would have existed for them to simply have no feelings and no emotions, which would have made them more productive and potentially more easier to keep to secrecy, they wouldn't have been able to do their job if they didn't have feelings. What a juxtaposition and what a spanner from the makers of the series. I think that says a lot. And then there are other touches in it that are absolutely, you should absolutely see it. For instance, um, people who are wrong were often sent to a break room. Um, and it took me a while to understand um, the double entendre behind the break room. But I assure you it's there. And essentially what we're looking at is, and, and more importantly, what we're witnessing by people understanding it and by people really connecting with it is the fact that it, this is a common problem. This is a shared reality. This life where we are expected to be professional and not um, engage as humans at work, this is the case for everyone. We all relate, we've all been there, we all kind of felt like we are being, um, like what's needed out of us, what's expected out of us is that we are 
robot-like at work. So that's why we connect. Now, you know, kind of the flip side of that horrendous reality is what we're living through um, every day now, which is essentially this new reality where hybrid work is here. We know it's not going anywhere. We know that irrespective of how many prime ministers and tone deaf CEOs claim we should go back to work, that's never going to happen. Um, and I think that that same impetus that keeps us from actually doing any of these things, uh, responding to these uh, silly demands that the powers that be put on us. So that impetus that keeps us being revolutionary enough to stay out of the office should be the same impetus that keeps us focused on diminishing the human work, focused on, on taking off um, some of this, this ridiculous situation where uh, we have so much human debt that we are closer to this dystopian, ridiculous self reality reality than we are of an, an, an utopian reality where we are being at our most productive, we love each other, we have joy at work, we employ our passion, and we make the most amazing of, of things together, um, products and, and services that we give our customers. So Unfortunately, we're closer to severance than we are of to this um, utopia of, of of happy workers, but we have got to move closer to the, the utopia one way or another. And so this week too, we wish you the very best in, in keeping heart and in, in, in finding ways to employ your passion, to not let the human work take hold and to keep us as far away from the severance future as we possibly can be. Thanks for all your hard work and we will talk to you next week. Bye.